The Yankees were eliminated from the playoffs last night by the Astros, and Alex Rodriguez continued his struggles in the postseason with runners in scoring position. A-Rod was 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position Tuesday and is now hitless in his last 19 postseason at bats with runners in scoring position. A-Rod is hitting 156. Again, with runners in scoring position during his postseason career, the lowest by any player in postseason history. Stephen A., what are your thoughts on A-Rod's postseason struggles? It's embarrassing. There's really no other way to slice it. I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to get too upset. Alex Rodriguez has disappointed me as a Yankee fan on so many occasions in so many ways. Uh, he's emblematic of everything that's gone wrong for the Yankees in this millennium. They've got one World Series title in the last 15 years, something that Skip has reminded me of. I'm a diehard Yankee fan, and today I'm dead. I'll be back alive. I'll be resurrected next season. I'll root for my Yankees like I always do. Uh, but to go down, it's not just that you go down, it's how you go down. I understand Keiko is no joke. Uh, now it's 22 scoreless innings and three starts against the Yankees this year, and I get that. Um, and it didn't help that you've got someone like Brett Gardner who struck out three times last night. The offense was weak. Uh, Tanaka gave up 25 home runs this season, gave up a homer to Rasmus, gave up a home run to Gomez. Uh, but he wasn't awful. He just wasn't great. At the end of the day, you would have liked to have seen someone come into the play. But these are the New York Yankees. And I think it was a bad omen, and I think that I... Uh, hoped for, not expected, but hoped for too much when your biggest name is Alex Rodriguez, a known cheater and uh, an abuser of performance enhancing drugs and a serial liar along the way is your marquee name and you're the New York Yankees. You have a problem. And so I think it's incumbent upon them to go out there. You still had the highest payroll for the 17th consecutive season at 200 million this year, but you got to go out and get a Bryce Harper. You got to get a caliber yeah. guy like that. You got to get a big name in box office because Alex Rodriguez clearly ain't it. Because no matter what great Yankees we point to, Skip, they are not dudes that show up yep. from April through September. They're the guys that go, that show up in October. And that is not Alex Rodriguez. In all seriousness, as I watched that game unfold last night, what struck me was that there are no more Yankees on the Yankees. There, there are no true Yankees. Obviously, Derek Jeter is gone, and, and it was so ironic that Colby Rasmus for the Astros went Jeter on the Yankees with a leadoff home run in a big postseason game. And it, I look at, at this year as you had to depend on Alex Rodriguez, and for a while, he carried your team. And then the flashpoint, the microcosm of your season came bottom six, two outs, a-Rod at the plate, and this is it. Two this on. is the moment. Two on. And, and yeah, two men on, and one pitch, one swing, can of corn fly ball to center field to cargo, and it's that that's the basically that was the end of that game. It was Didn't that moment because you had to depend on Alex Rodriguez. That's not the New York Yankees as we used to know and love them. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. It means nothing to me what he does in a regular season. You know that. Everything was about the postseason, like I said. It. And once again, he didn't show up. After swearing, we're playing for CC now. <laughs> I knew then. You said it. That we, I knew then it was a problem. Yep. More, more postseason baseball tonight. The Pirates host the Cubs in the NL wild card game. Thank you to Ronda Rousey, Joanna for joining us, Herm Edwards. Uh, Rhonda was great today. She, I really she, enjoyed listening. She was fantastic, yep. right? I'm going to read that book, Ender's Game. I, I saw the movie. I don't know you if did? it's as good as the book. All right, was, I'm going to check it out. Good. Thank you guys so much for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow. He says, now that he's back, he's not looking back, and there's no need to reminisce. I want to correct myself. I apologize. I said you have a personal relationship with Greg Hardy or mentoring him. No, it's Randy, Randy Gregory. Gregory. Mm -hmm. So let's get that straight first. How do you feel, though, Coach, about Greg Hardy being back in the NFL and playing this weekend? Well, he, he gets a second chance, an opportunity, and, and you got to give Jerry and Stephen Jones a lot of credit. Uh, you know, they've done this before with, with players. Uh, I wish they would have coached him up prior to him meeting the media. Yes. That, that would probably have been my, my way of going about doing it as, as a head coach. And you know, I said, let's make sure that we understand he's going to face the media here when he's eligible to play. 
and we got to make sure that he understands it's a thing he needs to touch upon, and it's not about football. And we have to go back a little bit, and I think he has to bring that out because that kind of sets the stage going forward. And, you know, he probably didn't get coached up. I wish he had coached him up a little mm -hmm. bit better. Uh, he could have shown a little bit more humility. Uh, have, being grateful to have this opportunity to come back and you can't take the past away obviously you got to move forward but he needed to be coached up they coached him up on the offseason they yeah. coached him up when they brought him in and I think they dropped the ball a little bit here before he went to the media because that's because that, no you know the media, the media I say this as a media person <laughs> yeah. now, they, they have an obligation to ask him these questions yes. I mean, that, yeah. that's what people want to know I mean besides he's a good pass rusher a good football we get that part of yep. it but it's the other part you know are, are you are, are, are you sorrowful for your, your, you know, the way you have been portrayed? You know, and, and you don't have to get into everything, but you need to say something. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of, they dropped the ball. Mishandled. So yeah. if you had been head coach of this team. Yes, sir. And you had had a vote in the situation, yes. in the matter, mm -hmm. would you have voted no to have him on your football team? Yes, I would have voted no. Just, and what if your owner had said, gee, I just think we need him and I want to bring him in, you have no choice, well, right? If the owner says you bring him in, then I'm going to say, I'm going to work with the guy. Okay. And I have no problem going forward. And if, if I know you... My personal opinion, this is what I would say. Okay, that's good. I, I respect that. And if I know you, if you had Greg Hardy in your locker room and you knew this was going to be his first interview, you would have coached him up personally. Ah, uh, yes. Right? Yes. I'd have Instead, hey, the let's, yes. let's talk this out. Let's think this through. Mm -hmm. You'll probably get asked about X, Y, and Z. Now, let's think about how to answer these questions. Yeah, and, you know, I dealt with a guy, and you know him, um, Quincy Carter. We brought Quincy Carter in from the Dallas Cowboys. He was on the street. And Quincy had some issues. Yes, he did. And I told Quincy, here's the deal. Every Tuesday on the off day, you're going to come and you're going to sit with me in my office. We're going to spend an hour every mm. Tuesday. And you got to be here every Tuesday. Off day, don't care about the off day. You come see me. Mm. We never talked about football. Mm. And we did that until he got ready. And then he actually played for us. And won two out of, of three games. Yep. Chad went down. Uh, so, you know, that's just, that's me. Now, I'm not saying every coach has to do that. But I felt obligated, hey, I got to help this guy. Because if I can make him a better man, he's going to be a better football player. You think you helped a little bit? I think I did. And if you tell, if you ask Quincy, he'll probably say that too. Yep. So you know, that that's kind of where where it was for me personally. But every coach handles it different. Yep. I'm not saying my way is the oh, best way. It's just the way I would have handled it. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Stephen, Stephen A. a. Conversation is a struggle for me, to be quite honest with you. Um, I remember a few months ago when I was on the air, and I was on my radio show, and I was talking about how he got convicted via a pinch trial in North Carolina and somebody in the NFL, not the NFL league office, just one of the players, called me and said, Stephen A., I felt the same way. The thing that I can't escape is that he has adamantly stated his innocence even after the, ju the judge convicted him on a bench trial. He didn't exercised his right to appeal the decision and go to a jury trial, at which time, obviously, the alleged victim uh, could not be found. And supposedly later on, we heard that there was a settlement that was reached because the DA could not find her. According to what I heard, I think he's guilty of sin. According to what you heard, Skip, mm -hmm. you think he's guilty of sin. I do. Evidently, evidently, Coach, one would surmise, based on your position, you believe he's guilty. That's fine. But if Greg Hardy doesn't believe he's guilty, we now have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we have a problem because here is a guy that doesn't want to confront the issue and clearly has been coached to deflect and evade in a society where it's not going to be allowed. Whether it's via social media or the media members who are literally and officially in front of his face, who are covering the Dallas Cowboys every day, all day long, they're not going to let this go. They're not going to let Greg Hardy, and I can't believe he doesn't see this, they are not going to allow Greg Hardy to play the entire season, simply get sacks, and just move on and talk about football without ever addressing this. They won't let it happen. <laughs> and if they have to get it, if they can't get it out of him, 
They're going to bombard Jason Garrett and the players, his teammates in that locker room until they get something, some level of contrition, some level of admission, some level of, 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 a, of, of any kind of explanation as to what has happened. This guy right now, I think that we need to step up Regardless, in this PC world that we're, we're, we're living in, we have to recognize that we believe he's guilty, particularly emanating from what a bench trial, a judge on a bench trial in North Carolina has validated for us all. But this guy has said that he is innocent and he has proclaimed his innocence and he is acting like he has nothing to address. Some way along the way, Somebody is going to have to deal with the reality that he believes along the way he didn't do something wrong. That's scary to me. It should be scary to us, no doubt. But it is a reality that we cannot escape. This guy clearly does not believe he did something wrong. You want to respond? You're no, to go. you go. All right. Stephen A., thank you for what you just said can't tell you from my heart how much I agree with every word you just uttered. And I'm going to take it one step farther. Not only did he show zero remorse for what happened back in Carolina, cl clearly, he was so emboldened in his new role for his dream team, the Dallas Cowboys, lifelong dream of playing for my Dallas Cowboys. He was so emboldened, he had the audacity to use the phrase without flinching or any regret. I'm going to come out guns blazing when we all know that his accuser testified that she was thrown onto a couch full of semi-automatic weapons. And he had the audacity without a single ounce or flinch of regret to talk about how attractive Tom Brady's wife is, hope she comes to the game, hope she brings her sister and all of her friends. And then to even think the joke was so funny that he went on to say that he votes for Pro Bowl quarterbacks based on how attractive their wife or girlfriend is. Really? After all you've been through, you're going to go there already in your first Dallas Cowboy interview, the first week you're eligible to play for my Dallas Cowboys? And look, I, I don't want to be a hypocrite about this. My Cowboys, as you well know from mm -hmm. your many years, they have a long history of, of having troubled players in their locker rooms, renegades, lawbreakers. I could go on and on. I wrote a whole book about it called God's Coach. Tom Landry had a whole locker room. Yeah. You, you know all this. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to be a hypocrite here, but I did tell Stephen A. to start this show. It made me ashamed, made me embarrassed, made it very difficult for me to root for my Cowboys this Sunday because I have to also root for him. And I was on the record, as Coach Herm said, I also said before Jerry signed him, I, I don't like it. I don't want him on my team. I think we will survive without him, and now it's almost like their season hinges upon the return of one Greg Hardy. You and Stephen A., you hit it, and I'll tell you this as we close this subject. I believe this. I've always lived my life this way. What we eventually do in the dark comes to the light, and so it'll all come to the light. No question. So we'll it will all come to the light. And as a woman, I really appreciate all your comments, remarks there, and, and your honesty. Thank you. Herm, you're done. You're off, you're off the hot seat here, but you're moving on. We know you got a full day ahead. The Yankees, they're done too. One and done in the playoffs. Oh, that's too oh. bad. Oh. That's too bad. So how much is A-Rod to blame for it? Oh, none. Stephen A., none. we know that's what Stephen he A's was going to do. Yeah. That's the Yankees, yes. Stephen A's yeah, it's Look, Stephen A's in New York. Moment. Dallas Kikes. <laughs> we'll get into it next. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. The Yankees were eliminated from the playoffs last night by the Astros, and Alex Rodriguez continued his struggles in the postseason with runners in scoring position. A-Rod was 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position Tuesday and is now hitless in his last 19 postseason at-bats with runners in scoring position. A-Rod is hitting 156. Again, with runners in scoring position during his postseason career, the lowest by any player in postseason history. Stephen A., what are your thoughts on A-Rod's postseason struggles? It's embarrassing. There's really no other way to slice it. I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to get too upset. Alex Rodriguez 
has disappointed me as a Yankee fan on so many occasions in so many ways. Uh, he's emblematic of everything that's going wrong for the Yankees in this millennium. They've got one World Series title in the last 15 years, something that Skip has reminded me of. I'm a diehard Yankee fan, and today I'm dead. I'll be back alive. I'll be resurrected next season. I'll root for my Yankees like I always do. Uh, but to go down, it's not just that you go down, it's how you go down. I understand Keiko is no joke. Uh, now it's 22 scoreless innings and three starts against the Yankees this year, and I get that. Um, and it didn't help that you've got someone like Brett Gardner who struck out three times last night. The offense was weak. Uh, Tanaka gave up 25 home runs this season, gave up a home run to Rasmus, gave up a home run to Gomez. Uh, but he wasn't awful. He just wasn't great. At the end of the day, you would have liked to have seen someone come into the play. But these are the New York Yankees. And I think it was a bad omen, and I think that I... Uh, hoped for, not expected, but hoped for too much when your biggest name is Alex Rodriguez, a known cheater and uh, an abuser of performance enhancing drugs and a serial liar along the way is your marquee name and you're the New York Yankees you have a problem and so I think it's incumbent upon them to go out there, you still have the highest payroll for the 17th consecutive season at 200 million this year but you got to go out and get a Bryce Harper you got to get a caliber yep. guy like that. You got to get a big name and box office because Alex Rodriguez clearly ain't it. Because no matter what great Yankees we point to, Skip, they are not dudes that show up yep. from April through September. They're the guys that go, that show up in October. And that is not Alex Rodriguez. In all seriousness, as I watched that game unfold last night, what struck me was that there are no more Yankees on the Yankees. There, there are no true Yankees. Obviously, Derek Jeter is gone, and, and it was so ironic that Colby Rasmus for the Astros went Jeter on the Yankees with a leadoff home run in a big postseason game. And it, it, I look at, at this year as you had to depend on Alex Rodriguez, and for a while, he carried your team. And then the flashpoint, the microcosm of your season came bottom six, two outs, a-Rod at the plate, and this is it. Two this on. is the moment. Two on. And, and yeah, two men on, and one pitch, one swing, can of corn fly ball to center field to cargo, and it's that that's the basically that was the end of that game. It was Didn't that moment because you had to depend on Alex Rodriguez. That's not the New York Yankees as we used to know and love them. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. It means nothing to me what he does in a regular season. You know that. Everything was about the postseason, like I said. It. And once again, he didn't show up. After swearing, we're playing for CC now. <laughs> I knew then. You said it. That we, I knew then it was a problem. Yep. More, more postseason baseball tonight. The Pirates host the Cubs in the NL wildcard game. Thank you to Ronda Rousey, Joanna for joining.